Having heard the way these students have articulated their view and vision so clearly, actually they are critical to all the others. Uh, there is an index that measures the degree of corruption as one of these 18 scores. There's an index, there are five different indices about different parts of the role of technology. I heard a number of you make reference to both of those things, as well as the value directly of education. Amongst these 15 countries here, the highest score, and this is an index that goes from 0 to 10, and something I often say on the occasions I have had the pleasure of coming to Nigeria before, South Korea is the highest scoring of these 15 countries. And it is a country which intrigues me increasingly as I have learned about economics and the world developing. And it's one that I think is of relevance for you to think about. Because when I was your age, the wealth of people in South Korea was the same as the wealth of people in Nigeria. Today, South Korea has the wealth of a level which is very similar to most so-called G7 or the most developed nations. They are the only vaguely large populated country that has made that change in my lifetime. And when I was your age, they were in the same position as Nigeria. And so if things that are, they have done well, you can harness and develop for your own societies and people, you will get to be where they are today. But because you have already four times more people than South Korea, and by 2050, probably six times more people, you will be a lot bigger than them, as well as being probably as wealthy. And I'd just like to finish, and I won't show any more slides, so we have a chance to discuss, and I'll come and sit down with the rest of the uh, distinguished panel. Of those things, I would highlight four. And they are things that you have all already said. South Korea scores the best in the world out of 180 countries that I look at this for, for using modern technology. Better than the United States. Most people of the 45 million people in South Korea have access to all their technology. If that provision can be given to your 170 million people, particularly the young people, it is a huge influence and changer for the future. Secondly, as one of you said, power. When I was last here uh, a few months ago, it was sometime just after the power reforms, and I suggested to my friend Ngozi and other policymakers here that if that can be implemented, in my judgment, Nigeria will be able to boost its growth rate from 7% to 10. That will help, along with the technology, make the progress. The third thing will be to do more and more trade with all your neighbors, including neighbors here in Africa. For far too many decades, African countries have had battles with each other and only vaguely traded with people elsewhere in the world through commodities. If you can engage and trade with your neighbors, there will be self-fulfilling positives that go with the other points I've made. And then lastly, and an enabler for people to understand the importance of those three things, but everything else is education on its own. Getting all your young people into a full, proper education to give them the chance to develop their life skills and contribute to society is probably the single most important thing that will determine whether you can become the 15th largest economy in the world or not. And with that, it is a great pleasure and honor to be here and hear with these wonderful guests how you are going to be able to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ian. OK. Um, Let's set the ground rules very quickly because we've got just about 22 minutes to wrap this up and we haven't even started yet. But I'll just say very quickly that uh, each individual 
on the panel here will have just 60 seconds and we'll be timing you very closely. You have 60 seconds to run through your initial thoughts on the issue that is at hand. Leadership that will take the sector to the next level or to the level that we aspire to. And um, in 60 seconds, once you've said that, then we'll go into the conversation that we expected to have. And if there is any time left, then we will take some questions and some comments. And I will be very focused on the young people to raise their comments and to ask their questions before I talk to the adults. This is the digital age. So we will expect the people who live in the digital age as against those who have enjoyed analog for a long time to speak a lot more. It is their time. Now, I will want to start because some of the kids mentioned something that is quite profound, potential rather than grades. And I'm a living example of potential rather than grades. And I'm sure quite a few people here, probably with the exception of those who are professors amongst us, they've always had good grades. But some of us are just potential. So I will, on that note, want to start with the governor of Edo State, Your Excellency. Your thoughts on the issue of leadership that could take this uh, problem or crisis in education sector to the level that we aspire. You've been a union activist. A lot of people would have looked at you in your heydays and never thought you will be a leader of a state and do so well. So, Your Excellency, please take it away. Grossly unfair. Because I think at the heart of the entire discussion is the role of leadership. And you've had time for everything except the real question. And I think it is not fair. But however, <laughs> I think for me, we are not about to reinvent the wheel. In the 50s through to the 60s, Nigeria produced the best brains. We had schools that attracted not just Nigerian youth, but even foreign students coming to Nigeria you know, to seek enrollment in our schools. I think as the quality of Nigerian leadership deteriorated, right from the days of the military up to the moment that we got our priorities wrong, we began to see the kind of rot that now characterizes our schools. The way forward is for we as leaders to go back to the basic and ask ourselves, what are we here for? I mean, there was a time in this country where students threatened to shut down their schools. And you have to engage the student union leader to negotiate not to buy classes. We moved from that era to one in which we shut down our university for six months. And it, was, it wasn't an issue. The response of the Nigeria elite in the private sector, in the political class, and even for labor leaders, is that everybody find what I call privatized solution. Take your child to Ghana, take your child to London, because the public schools have been completely misrun. This is valid for local government, it's valid for state government, and it's valid for federal government. Now, I don't think it's in 30 seconds that we can discuss, I mean, in 60 seconds we can discuss this issue. For me, it is not late for Nigeria to start. And I think the young ones captured it well. Whenever you realize that you need to wake up, you can still make a day's job. In Edo State, we have tried to revisit the basic. We need to re-examine the role of the teachers. Are the teachers competent to teach and to impart knowledge? Is the environment enabling? Is it conducive for teachers to learn? The people talk about light. Light presupposes that there is a classroom. When we have children under the tree, classrooms without roof, I mean, what are we talking about? And this is the story across the 36 states. And I wish there was enough time for us to do case by case studies. The only point I made to the minister, and I said I wish I could say it to one case, was that it is not even fair, and we disturb the real picture where we select students from very privileged federal government colleges. We are admission, admission, admission is a function not of merit, it's a function of connection, it's a function of the uncle, it's a function of minister's list, governor's list, etc. I would like to see that in trying to understand the depth of our crisis, that we brought children from those schools without roof in Edo State, those schools without roof in Casina State, those schools without roof in Lagos State, and ask them to talk side by side with children from these private schools so that we can see how much the environment can change, you know, the, 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 the entire foundation for, for education. 
I think what we've done today, what we've done today is to 